Yeah, yo, I gotta take a step back, I really can't believe this This hit me hard, I'm falling down to pieces My cousin brother had an accident, having seizures And now pronounced dead, where are you Jesus? Why did this happen? He was so incredible We were closer than brothers, the bond imperishable He was chasing his dreams, going for something medical One car crash happened, had to end it all I'm trying to get a grip, don't know what to make of it Rewinding the scenes, thinking if I could have helped If I was there that night, things could have gone well Could have been someone else, now I can't face myself I hate myself, and I'm a walking mess Enduring stress, I'm talking less These negative thoughts start to cut like swords Trying to understand the source of this cause just answer one thing why was he taking god all these feelings and questions i started shaking off i really feel like a rocket that is taking off my heart's breaking and i'm aching in a manic state of shock god you didn't protect so why let this happen spread peace and passion just imagine now i'm crying lows and i'm really trying to cope a nice quiet blow you left him dying slow Yeah. Never turns out as you should. Then I hear God saying, No one ever held you. No single moment of truth. But if you are mine, I will look into those eyes. Yeah. And say, Yo. I know you were in pain, hurt emotionally He was close to you, or so close to me But his time to go was destined totally Now he's free of the pain, the soul can leave I know it's sad to see you're probably mad at me And him dying in the crash seems a tragedy But he had cancer, would've died gradually So him passing quick was a chance to leave Don't blame your thoughts, don't torture yourself Nothing could've been done, even with fortune and wealth You're not gonna be punished, start scorching in hell Pour waters of peace all over yourself they're a soul and actor playing their part the body is a costume right from the start it's not the end no because the soul's just left to carry on its journey get a new address the end always becomes the start of a new beginning so how should you be feeling as a human being don't start crying lost in your own tracks because it's very damaging to pull a soul back give powerful thoughts to the pure seeds so they can move with peace onto their journey just know one thing this is never the end and when the time's right, your souls will meet again. There's always reasons. But it's never good. Check. Never turns out as it should. As it should. Then I hear God saying. No one ever held you. No one ever held you. single moment of truth if you were mine I would have locked into those eyes you rest in peace to everyone lost peace love and good wishes you thank you very much lucky like see thank you Thank you, Lucky, wherever you've gone. <laughs> it was extremely moving, wasn't it? You really felt the emotion behind uh, that experience. So uh, uh, we hope you enjoyed your workshops. Yeah? You had a good experience, a nice discussion, everyone. Felt you, your voices were uh, heard, exercised. So our final speaker for the day is uh, Maureen Goodman. Maureen has been a teacher with the Brahma Kumaris for over 40 years. She's the program director um, for Brahma Kumaris UK and the uh, BK representative to the UN in Vienna. And uh, Maureen has lots of passions. She's really into interfaith 
things and has really done a lot with different uh, re people from different religious backgrounds. And I know that's a passion of hers, but also youth. She's been very keen to support youth work, community outreach, prisons, health, women's issues, so many areas that Maureen's uh, really put her energy into and been a tireless server in, in the work of spirituality and bringing spirituality into society. So I am very interested to hear what her thoughts are going to be today on really the spiritual aspects of dying, building on what we've already heard today. And um, we were just talking at lunchtime about a conversation I was having with a friend recently, someone we've both known for many years, and he just stopped mid-sentence and looked at me and said, Sarah, you know, we're eternal. <laughs> the soul is eternal. Like, he really kind of just had a, a, an epiphany at that point. And I sort of sat there and I, I looked in and I went, wow, yeah, that's a pretty deep thought to have. So I'm looking forward to Maureen telling us more about what it means to be a soul and Peter's discussion about that kind of consciousness that, that we need to really practice going into through meditation and also be aware of that reality of being a soul that we need to develop within ourselves. So Sister Maureen, please come up and join us and share your thoughts on the soul's journey. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Oh, catches everything. And uh, I don't have a PowerPoint. I think it's, um, oh, is it because, oh, is that better? Is that what I need to do? Yeah, okay, got it. Um, keeps jumping back. Uh, I don't have a PowerPoint, so I thought I'd have the luxury of sitting down, if that's all right. <laughs> um, I'm sure as, as you were, I was, um, very moved by this morning's presentations and uh, a lot of rich information and um, especially I think because Andrew is out there on the field working with people and he shared very moving stories and um, it reminded me of a saying actually in one of the Jewish commentaries, the Talmud, where it says that if you save one soul, it's as if you've saved the whole world. And so I was thinking that, you know, whoever we interact with and the benefit or the care, the compassion, the comfort that he's brought to people and many others, of course, and many in this room too, it's not just for one individual, but it affects the whole. And I think that's very important to remember. Um, if I think about this whole subject, um, I was uh, brought up Jewish, and so we have a lot of superstitions around death. <laughs> and um, uh, people who've worked with me in, in the office, you know, I've had to learn, I, I, I can't throw photographs away, for example, or, you know, the little things like that that still stay with you. Um, but it was interesting that um, when I was studying with the Brahma Kumaris and <clears throat> began to get more involved in, in serving, um, one of the things that I started to do some years ago was to um, actually conduct some funerals. Well, it's been quite a few now. And I was like amazed at myself, you know, and I remember saying to my dad once, you know, I'd have sooner been a brain surgeon than conduct a funeral. <laughs> you know, like 
never imagined, especially with all that taboo that you're brought up with. And so gradually, bit by bit, the sort of mystery, I don't know if it's quite gone, but certainly it's much clearer. And then, of course, when you hear somebody like Peter, you get so many insights. And um, I have also accompanied souls on that journey. And I remember one particular soul, and Sarah knew her well too. Um, I remember at one point, uh, she, she passed away through cancer. She was just 40 years old. And, um, and it, it's actually the only time that I've been present seeing a soul leave. Now, some of you are seeing the life force leave. Um, some of you would experience that more times, maybe. Um, but I remember um, it was just uh, a few days, actually two days before she passed away. And somehow when I'd gone to visit her, it was just the two of us, and normally there's other people around. And uh, she was, and it was the last time there was really a very coherent conversation. And she was thanking me. And I don't know where it came from, you know, I just said to her, um, you know, if somebody's going on a journey, you want to help them prepare, you want to pack something for them, give them something, um, talk something through. You're just going on a journey, so I was just helping you prepare for your journey. And then I thought about it, I thought, yes, it's a journey. And I think that what has helped me through experiences like that and, of course, in your own family when people leave, you know, nobody lasts forever, right? <laughs> Including us. It's that understanding and that belief in the continuity of consciousness, the continuity of life that is so comforting and so important. Um, when you do witness that moment when the life force leaves, and in this case it was so gentle and so, it was a beautiful moment actually. Um, it's so clear that the person has gone and what's left is, you know, a shell. And it makes you aware how that life force is what is making every organ function. You know, the, the, the um, relationship between that life force and the physical body is very, very close and very, very strong. And whatever is in the personality gets reflected through our features, um, the state of our, the condition of our body. Um, and if you're going through pain, then what happens to your mind? It's difficult to focus, you suffer. So this relationship is so, so close. And yet, once that life force leaves, what's left? The body can't do anything. And um, it's, uh, depending on how a person has lived their lives, so the person is able to leave. I use that term, and in fact, yes, I've used the word soul. That would be a more usual term that I would use, the soul, the being. And um, I know of one person, and his wife was describing to me I hope this isn't too much of a horror story for you. <laughs> but his wife was describing to me how he left. And I think he'd been a person with a lot of insecurities. And he'd had Alzheimer's and he hadn't spoken. He, he'd gone blind and deaf and he hadn't spoken for months. But at that time, he let out a big he, first of all, 
His knees came up to his chest. He let out a big roar, and then the soul left. I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> and then we actually, after that, um, including Daddy Janki, who the Janki Foundation is, is named after, um, we had a lot of meditation for the soul and a lot of prayers because we knew that the soul needed peace. And it was after one particular meditation that his wife said to us, now I can feel he's at peace. Very interesting. So that continuity of life means that there is also that possibility of serving, of giving, even after death. And then, you know, actually I was telling Sarah about my own dad and um, last few months he was in a, a, a home because he couldn't, well, various reasons. And um, they, they got him up for, woke him up, got him up ready, dressed, washed for breakfast. He was sitting in an easy chair waiting for them to call him for breakfast. They go to call him and he's just gone just like that. And I know he felt very comfortable in the sense that he felt he'd done what he had to do in life, his conscience was clear, and he wasn't scared of death, actually. He had a lot of faith in God, and so the soul just went so naturally. And isn't that how it's meant to be, actually? Just very natural. And Peter was showing us the contrast of <laughs> what it's like when there's so much medical intervention, but that's, of course, another, another subject. So it makes me think that that preparation has to begin in life, right? Um, because if that passing, and it doesn't mean that all the time you're thinking, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point. But I'm living in such a way that that spiritual awareness or that awareness of the soul, of being the being, is actually something that guides me through my life. And um, <coughs> I was very touched by the definition that uh, Andrew gave of... Um, the pain, spiritual pain, and how somehow the person can't reconcile what's going on inside with what is happening externally. And I was thinking that it's like the being, the soul, knows deep inside who it is or what is right, but can't quite bring that experience to the fore and certainly can't express it. And something that we understand in the BKs is that every soul really has inherent goodness and has that peace, love, truth, happiness at the core but it's become very buried by all the influences that we are subjected to every day. You know, you may get up in the morning and say to yourself, I'm a peaceful being, I'm a peaceful soul. And then by the time you get to work, <laughs> you've forgotten it. <laughs> but I think this is the practice we need to have to live our lives in that way so that when we do come to that point which we all will do inevitably it is it's not a it's not a it's not fearful but it is a natural transition and i like that word transition um you know, maybe that spiritual pain that was described, maybe that's what is often called the dark night of the soul. But we want to live in the day, right? 
Um, it was when I was on that journey with that sub person that I mentioned. It was then that I understood for the first time that healing is not necessarily about healing the body. Because I watched her over the few months healing all her relationships, particularly with her family, also with friends, also with the spiritual people she was connected with. And I was very struck by that because I saw as she was healing those relationships, I could see how she was preparing herself and she was at peace. And that's when it struck me, healing doesn't mean you have to get better. Maybe you have to go, there's another greater task ahead of you. But the healing of the soul is very, very important. And we put so much emphasis nowadays on healing the body and keeping the body alive. And sometimes a person's kept alive for months in a, in a vegetative state, and well, you know the stories. But we don't put enough emphasis on healing the soul itself. And I think this is very, very important. Um, I'd also like to touch upon a little, and the question was asked about when there is a sudden death or a traumatic death. And um, from what I understand is that when someone has died suddenly, an accident, whatever the trauma is, there actually hasn't been the time to prepare, not consciously, but yet, and I was reminded of what the Dalai Lama said, the soul knows two years in advance. <laughs> I thought, I must look that up. <laughs> but I can um, remember, but still, even though there hasn't been a conscious preparation, there's something inside and I can remember one of our very powerful teachers in the BKs and he passed away I think about four years ago now and uh, he was in South America <coughs> uh, uh, very you know what a story born in Australia of Italian descent lived in Greece died in Brazil <laughs> he was an international person <laughs> um, but he was at our retreat centre in London just before he left on this journey. He'd come via London. And somebody who was having tea with us told us later that he said, I think this is the last time I'm coming here. For no reason. You know, he was just about to go on a trip. And I don't know if he registered even what he said. And um, apparently... And he actually had a very sudden, severe stroke and just went. You know, that was it. Um, and apparently, he was sitting at breakfast and somebody whispered something in his ear because he'd just taken the class in the morning and it was in Portuguese. And then the late, the sister, or we say sister, brother, you know, the person sitting with him, translated and just said, she said, you are an angel. He heard that, and the next minute he went. I mean, these put shivers up your spine a bit when you hear these stories, but there's something. But sometimes, you know, the soul can be confused to some extent when things happen suddenly. And so I'm always aware of how we need to be mindful of sharing loving, pure, good wishes and thoughts after a person has passed. Sometimes we get too caught up in our own grief. And I remember after um, this particular sister passed, the young sister I'm talking about before, I was remembering her every day and it was, I was a little sad. And I told one of our elder sisters about it, and she said to me, 
very kind answer. She said to me, it's okay. You're just remembering her to give her God's light and might. And I felt so relieved. And I just really started doing that so consciously. And after a few weeks, the memory faded. It was as if it was the last bit of going on the journey. I, I find all these things so um, fascinating and curious, you know, curiosity, Peter said, right? Uh, I'm curious about this kind of soul-to-soul -soul connection, not just after death, of course, in life. <laughs> That's the most important. How are we connecting with each other? And how are we helping to heal each other in our relationship so that we don't have too much work to do at the end of life. Um, I also um, just want to also take up another concept of what can happen after death. And some of you will have thought about it, for some it may not be something that you feel makes sense, but there is now increasing evidence of people who remember past lives. And, uh, and especially when I've read these accounts, again, it's usually been when death has been traumatic in some way and very sudden. So it is something to think about. Does that life force, the soul, of course, on leaving, we have to return to our essence our peace, love, purity, truth. But then, what if we actually come into another body, well, a mother's womb, right? <laughs> and we're carrying things with us. You know, so often in life, people have unexplained fears, right? And we all do, probably. You know, or your little idiosyncrasies. Where have they come from? You know, it's not from your upbringing, it's not from anything. Things that you carry with you, traits that you carry with you. And it's very interesting to think of this concept of the rebirth of the soul. Of course, I could go into that in a lot of detail. There isn't time and just wanted to plant a seed to consider it because this is all to do with the understanding of that continuity of life. But I think probably the last thing I would like to touch upon is the whole thing of healing and the importance of love and especially God's love in healing the soul. And uh, yes, of course, often when the soul gets healed, the body does get healed, but not always, as we said. And, um, you know, I've really seen when somebody, now it doesn't have to be that they're preparing for that transition, but also when they are trying to come to terms with some trauma in their life at whatever point, I've really honestly seen that the greatest healing force or the greatest possibility for healing is when the individual, when the soul, and I say the soul because you then have to be in the awareness of the soul. You know, Peter, Peter mentioned dropping the ego. He said, drop the trauma, drop the ego. Oh, like, you know, you can just <laughs> say, here it is, put it on the floor. Is it that easy to drop your ego? I wish it was, tell me. <laughs> I, I love a definition that one of our elder sisters gave of ego. She said, ego means e-go. That's enough for me. <laughs> um, but we have this persona with which we relate to the world and we want others to relate to us. But we need that practice of really identifying with those original qualities and really letting that shine through in whatever we are doing. And life is very different because then life is 
from the inside out, not the outside in, right? Because in a way we're like a boat in the sea of life and the boat needs to be in the water but if the water comes in the boat then the boat sinks. In other words, if we allow, if we allow ourselves to be totally overridden by all the influences that we face every day we will lose sight of our truth, our conscience and our true selves. So in practicing that awareness, it actually prepares us or enables us to be able to connect with that source of love. And this is something very powerful because it's such a pure love that actually has no limits and no conditions. And yes, we easily use this term unconditional love, but it's a very deep thing. A being with love that completely accepts, has complete acceptance, complete benevolence. Now, you know, imagine love. Well, I hope not just imagine, but experiencing love that is so benevolent, so healing, so nurturing, so accepting. And if we look at our world today, this is what is needed. Um, someone brought up the environment, education. We are, not, we are failing our young people in not educating them in these things. And, you know, there's that principle, spiritual principle, that whatever is going on within is reflected without. So see the state of the world and what is the state of human consciousness today. There is a direct correlation. Again, a topic for another time. <laughs> but think about it. So being connected and experiencing that quality of love is what can truly bring healing. And I think that's really what is needed in the world. And I hope from today, if, you know, like for me, a little bit more of the mystery of death has gone, and you're able to think more about it, understand it, but that's only possible when you are then able to have more understanding of the inner self, the soul, and you're able to connect. And then, yes, you see a transition, you see the continuity of life, and you feel more secure. So I hope that we have all taken a little bit further, or we've taken a few more steps on that journey today, together. Because actually together is important, isn't it? You know, I'm not alone, we're together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd now like for us to have a reflection together, a meditation. And this will be to help us connect with ourselves, with that source of love. So yes, feet on the floor, comfortable. Couple of deep breaths and this is a beautiful journey. Take a few moments to become truly present. I allow the past to stay in the past. 
and let the future come in its own time so that I can be here with myself. so I can understand who I am. I wish to understand my inner being, the life force, the soul. I know my outer being the roles, the identities, the props of life. But eventually, I have to leave those behind. So let me return to my essence. My body is a vehicle, a costume. It's impermanent, but I the being, I the soul, I'm eternal. I am a being of light, of energy. And the focus for that energy is in the center of my forehead, in my mind's eye. I can see that point of light sparkling the true self. As I focus on that point <coughs> all other awareness melts away become that point of light. And there is a deep inner stillness <coughs> I've come back to my original state of peace. I am a being of peace. In this awareness, I can connect. with the source of peace, the source of love. A love that is pure. A love that gives me back strength and courage. <clears throat> An unlimited source of love. So 
I connect with this love, this divine love. It's as if I'm in an ocean of love, surrounded by love. I'm nurtured by this love. I am healed by this love. As the love fills my being, it naturally overflows. reaches others in need, uplifts our world, the world needs the healing power of God's love. Our world is surrounded by love. And now I return to the awareness my body, myself, my surroundings. Filled with love and peace and truth.